NVIDIA is building the brains for the robotics revolution, while Alster is building the eyes. As a key player in NVIDIA's partnership ecosystem, Alster is a critical supplier for everything from autonomous warehouses to smart cities. Let's dig into this digital LiDAR leader powering the physical AI era. In short, Alster is a LiDAR company, which means it makes sensors to collect data and has a software layer that interprets this data. The software layer has been custom developed for specific industry use cases, so I do expect more software capabilities will continue to be rolled out. With the excitement for autonomous vehicles, hundreds of LiDAR companies have started up in recent years. However, Alster stands out as different from the pack. First, is Alster doesn't just focus on the automotive niche, but makes LiDAR systems compatible for various growth segments. Because of this, they are selling into a much larger $70 billion market and can benefit from the growth in robotics, warehouse automation, city planning tech, and of course, autonomous vehicles. Second key differentiator is these LiDAR sensors are fully digital, so can follow the Moore Law path as made semiconductors so cheap. Compare this with the competition, which have thousands of moving components that keep those LiDAR costs high. Lastly, the third differentiator, which is my favorite, is they don't just sell hardware, but also an embedded software platform that is customized to the data collected. This gives them the reoccurring revenue that another company we analyze, Simsara, has. Lots of similarities between the two business models, except that Alster has a market cap 1 20th of that of Simsara. Despite the smaller size, Alster has over a thousand customers, most notably a partner with NVIDIA to allow for serve robotics as food delivery robots to be autonomous, and they partner with Amazon for warehouse automation robots through the Proteus robot. 2026 will be a big year for Alster because their next-gen sensors using the L4 silicon chips, along with an update to Kronos, their automotive chip, are slated to be rolled out. These chips are designed to drastically lower the manufacturing cost of their sensors while doubling their performance. This will be critical for them to hit their milestone of positive free cash flow by the end of 2026. This would allow them to further accelerate as a self-funding growth machine versus continued stock dilution. From a financial perspective, Alster has been firing on all cylinders these past three years. They have 11 straight quarters of sequential quarterly revenue growth, and the revenue growth has grown at a CAGR of 31%. Most impressively, they are now at 42% gross margins, much higher than negative gross margins in 2023 due to the operating leverage gained on higher volume of sensors, but also due to their shifted focus on greater software sales, which are much higher margins. I really like this focus on embedded software, as this has been the key to Samsara's profitability, along with NVIDIA's CUDA software platform that enabled GPUs to expand beyond gaming. Let's look at a potential 2030 valuation for Alster so they continue their successful pivot into a software-enabled solutions provider. For revenue, I assume Alster can grow at a CAGR of 50% per year. This is an acceleration from the past three years, but I believe it can be achieved, as there should be a step change within the next few years for Alster and robotics, as NVIDIA transitions AI from data center compute to robotics. Alster, in this case, is primarily a software platform provider that is an operating system to perceive the data and feed it into NVIDIA's brain. They are a preferred partner of NVIDIA, so their technology will be optimized with NVIDIA's chips, which give them preferred status for customers one of the best experience. For gross margins, since they are primarily a software company at this point with price and power as a critical aspect of robotics, I believe they can command 60 plus percent gross margins. In this case, net income margin would be around 30% as they gain operating leverage on volume for the sensors they sell and their overall headcount expenses should remain flat as a software first company. For a PE ratio, I believe this can command a PE of 50, which would mean a peg under one with a 50% revenue CAGR. 
Reason for that is earnings would grow much faster under a SaaS model. A 50 PE would appear as quite the premium, but as a critical tech provider at the heart of robotics and with gap profitability, it certainly would deserve it. Putting all this together gives Alster a $16 billion market cap by 2030, over 10 extra returns from today's price. But surprisingly, it's less than the market cap of Simsara today. Key thing to note is this model assumes minimal revenue in Alster's autonomous vehicle segment, as that is a hyper-competitive commoditized scope. It rather is based on the growth of humanoid and warehouse robotics that could arrive in the next five years. If it does, Alster could be a massive winner. Now there are two huge watchouts to consider that can break this thesis. First is software adoption. My thesis assumes that customers would utilize Alster's perception layer in addition to buying the sensors. This is a risk as large companies may prefer to manage their own software layer to be able to protect the data and also be able to hyper-customize it for their application. Not every company in the industry is the same, which Alster software platform would try to standardize. Second watch out is competition from Chinese competitors. In the Chinese market, Chinese LiDAR companies have proved dominant and with subsidies can sell LiDAR sensors much lower. A customer would really need to be bought into the software add-on to buy from Alster versus a much cheaper sensor from China. The sensor itself may become commoditized, which is why the software platform is essential. With that said, let's evaluate the potential upside against the risks in mine and John's framework. Before we do, please read the disclaimer in the notes below. We are not financial advisors and anything we say should not be considered financial advice. Also, if you like content like this, please help us out and click a like and subscribe to follow us as we analyze most innovative companies twice per week. Now let's run Alster through my five-point framework. From a leadership perspective, I give Alster a very strong. They are founder-led by Angus Bacala, who helped weather Alster through the LiDAR winter of 2020 to 2023, in which many LiDAR companies failed. He enabled for their technological leadership as a first mover in silicon-based LiDAR and is hyper-focused on profitability with their software platform transition. For valuation, I give Alster a very strong. Over 10x potential should robotics and warehouse automation become a big theme. This isn't some pre-revenue startup either, but they are recognized as a technology leader with over 100,000 sensors shipped to date and have some pretty major customers between the government and commercial. Their push to free cash flow positive by year end is critical as it would allow them to self-sustain while waiting for the robotics boom to happen. For revenue and profit growth, I give this a strong. They've increased revenue 11 quarters in a row with a 31% CAGR. Profitability has gotten closer to gap profitable with gross margins increasing in this time frame even faster. As they continue to grow, they'll get tremendous operating leverage and have a viable path to free cash flow positive by end of 2026. For a total addressable market, I give them a strong. They have diversified away from the slim margin automotive sector and today have $70 billion market across four growth segments that they can target. Robotics is what excites me the most here, though. Lastly, for secular tailwinds, I give them a strong. Robotics and data analysis will be a big theme for the next wave of AI. And as a NVIDIA partner, this should be a major beneficiary of the secular tailwind to ride in NVIDIA's coattails. Overall, Auster is a tough one for me to decide on. It is extremely volatile. It's up roughly 4x from the past year's low point, but down nearly 75% since its 2020 IPO. I do like that they are leading with a superb technology with a digital-based LiDAR, and I do like they've been pushing to expand into software perception services versus just selling hardware. They've also got some high-profile customer wins, including a potential deal with the U.S. Department of Defense as a supplier to drones. The key here, though, is to minimize any risk since they are not yet free cash flow positive. So to do that, I am a yes. I want to own a small position of Auster, at most a 3% portfolio weight, until I can see more updates on its path to profitability.
What do you think, John, as you look at the technicals and review Ouster through your framework? Thank you, Scott, for that wonderful presentation and analysis for Ouster. Okay, I'd like to do my analysis now for Ouster, symbol O-U-S-T. Okay, for company fundamentals, it has no dividend. The beta is 2.99, which means it's 199% more volatile than the S&P 500. The market cap is 1.3 billion, and earnings comes out on March 19th. So that's a neutral. Okay, for the earnings history, the last four quarters, it's only beat, beaten two of the last four quarters. So that's a neutral to negative. For company financials, the growth pop, gross profit margin is 43%. There's no debt, and the peg ratio is not applicable. So anyway, that's a neutral. For my favorite part, the technicals, 200-day moving average slopes positive. The 50-day moving average is above the 200-day, and the price is above the 200, but less than the 50. The Bollinger Bands are narrow, and it's going from lower band to upper band to middle band. So that's where the, the price has been going to for the lower band, upper band to middle band. The slow stochastic oscillator is 25. And if it's below 20, it's oversold. But the lines just intersected. So that's a good sign. That, that's a good potential for price appreciation. The MACD is neutral. For short-term price appreciation, as to say, the, the slow stochastic oscillator is 25, like I said, and they intersected just recently, so that's a, a good short-term uh, potential. And the unbalanced volume is positive, so that's a neutral to positive. For the analysts that I cover, there's three cells, one hold, and two strong buys. And the price is around 3090 dollars analyst think it's going to go to. Institutions hold 52% of the outstanding shares. And that makes it a, it's a neutral. So overall, uh, I liked it. Oyster, what, what they do, the eyes of the humanoids or uh, warehousing, and I like that they're partnering with NVIDIA. I really like that a lot. And also, it's been hugging the 200-day moving average for the last maybe month, month and a half. So that's a good sign. And the 200-day moving average is around 22 right now at this point. But on the negative, the gross profit margin should be around 71% for tech companies but this one is 43% gross profit, profit margin. But I do like to tear in sensors for robots and, and warehousing. So that's a really good thing. And like I say, that they're partnering with the video. So Scott, I'm a yes for a small position, mainly being because it's been hugging the 200 day moving average. And that, that point is around 22. The 200 day moving average is around 22. So I'm in for maybe a quarter position of Ouster. So back to you, Scott. Thanks, John. We both like its potential as a NVIDIA partner should the focus shift in AI to robotics and automation. John believes now's a good time for a starter position from a technical perspective as the price is around the 200-day moving average of roughly $22. It will be extremely volatile, though, so we will just want a starter position of 3% of the portfolio weight. With that said, thank you for watching. Please click a like and subscribe to follow us as we analyze the most innovative companies twice per week. Until next time, happy investing.